Welcome to Focus on Africa from BBC World News. We start today's program with Alma's story, a young Ethiopian girl who traveled to Saudi Arabia for a job only to be overworked, underpaid, and ultimately raped and injured. For the thousands of migrant workers who become victims of forced labor, speaking out is never really easy. Well, journalist Benjamin Dix and artist Lindsay Pollock have found a unique way to give a voice to those who would otherwise remain silent. Almaz said goodbye to her mother. And for the first time in her life, she flew to Riyadh. Almaz would wake up at five o'clock each morning and pray before starting work. Sometimes she would not crawl into bed until two. Days turned into weeks and months. Still Almaz had not been paid. Well, with me here in studio is Benjamin Dix, creator of this animation, and Dorcas Eskin, national coordinator of Eve's Poppy Project that deals with trafficked women. Thank you for uh, taking time to talk to us. Thank you. Benjamin, what happened after this? After meeting Almaz? We've just watched a very powerful uh, uh, end to that uh, so cartoon. So she, she was uh, uh, paralyzed from the waist down. Uh, they kept her inside the house for the next 10 days until she regained consciousness. Uh, they realized, the family realized that she would be no use to them anymore as she couldn't use her legs. And they put her, gave her to the driver. Her last memory as she left the house was the madam telling the driver to hurry back quickly from the airport because we need to go shopping this afternoon. They dumped her at Riyadh airport, flew back to uh, Addis in Ethiopia and there she's in a women's refuge where I met her and she was learning to walk again. We'll talk a little more about your work, but we've also been speaking to people, um, some people in Kenya who've also gone through almost similar experiences. And this is one lady uh, who told us what happened to her when she went to Saudi Arabia, things including even rape. Yeah, I have a distance cousin of mine, though she's not that close, Okay, she knew what I was going through, and then she approached me and asked me if I could go somewhere. She said somewhere to go and make good money in Saudi Arabia. My first salary, uh, they gave me 15000 and when I asked them, this is not the, the amount we agreed on, they told me that you had agreed with someone else and us, we are, you are both who are paying you here in Saudi Arabia. So I had no choice but just to take that 15,000. Uh, when you are in Saudi Arabia, you are not that free like here in Kenya. You can't, okay, you can't just do anything without permission. Like I, when I used to like want something like always, I could send my employer and then she could bring me back from work in the evening. Dorcas, let me bring you in here. Is this story familiar because you work with a lot of people in situations like this? Sadly, it, it really is. Um, most of the women that I've supported in my project uh, from, from Africa have either been trafficked for the purposes of prostitution or forced labor. And um, we have very similar stories to women who've been trafficked to Bahrain, to Saudi Arabia, 
who've gone through rape. As soon as the madame has gone to the market, the, the uh, master of the house takes advantage. They don't have control of their passports. They're in a foreign country. They have no, no means out. And there is a big demand for cheap labor in the Middle East and other parts of the world. So this problem is quite phenomenal and quite global. Benjamin. You told the story in a very different way. I mean, you used cartoon, really, I should say, to tell a very difficult story. Um, some would wonder why and what kind of reception you have had. Um, well, we've been doing this for a couple of years. It was uh, research that I started off at university, doing this as a PhD of, of how we tell stories through comic books, through art. And really what we wanted to do was to try and break down some of the the statistics that we see in the media of 10,000 migrant workers or 50,000 asylum seekers, whatever, and each one of these statistics is a, an individual. Each one of the migrant workers is an Almaz. It's someone's daughter, someone's sister. And we found that uh, presenting that work, that journalism in the way of a cartoon, uh, the comic strip, engages people, that they see the, they see the suffering on the face of the illustration. They, they, they can hang the statistic on a person. How have people reacted to, to well, this? The last 24 hours since we launched this on the BBC yesterday is we've had lots of only really positive uh, feedback but the most wonderful and moving feedback that we got was uh, probably about 25 or 30 emails from women across Asia and Africa who emailed me saying I'm Almaz, this is my story. Mm. Dorcas, we have treaties that have been signed that uh, help with protecting domestic workers across the world. Mm. Why is it still happening? Well, uh, forced labor, trafficking, modern day slavery, however you like to t uh, term it, depends on two key factors. It depends on someone being very vulnerable in the source country, so it's a development problem. And sadly, trafficking isn't a big development spending priority for uh, lots of donor governments, and neither is it a priority in countries of source. But it also depends on a market. You know, so if there isn't a demand for cheap sex, for cheap labor, then trafficking wouldn't exist. So you can't just have a legislative solution. Mm -hmm. It's important. But also, you have within those legislative uh, provisions a really bad way of seeing migrant workers or immigrants in a lot of these destination countries. And that's what needs to change so that they can get the rights that they're entitled to. But how much help do you then also get from the countries? Uh, of origin really because mm. that is quite an issue isn't it? It is an issue so it, um, uh, all these women that we are talking about come from countries that need to do better on key things on gender equality on, uh, on uh, things like economic opportunities, education, because if you have a good education, if you have good economic opportunities, if you are respected uh, um, as an equal to a man in your home country, then there are very little incentives to migrate elsewhere and find yourselves in difficult situations that others can exploit. So I think missing in this equation around trafficking or forced labor is we always look at the actions of the person who's exploited. But I think we need to look more about the actions of the governments of the countries that these people come from, so the governments that are receiving them, and then the people who buy their services so or use their services. all parties need to be involved in this. They do. Benjamin, what should we be looking forward to? What's your next project? Uh, well, now I'm based in Istanbul and I'm working with a bunch of very talented Syrian artists um, illustrating their st the stories of Syrian refugees across Turkey and across the Mediterranean into uh, Europe with smugglers. So, interestingly, you know, your, your uh, piece later about the anniversary of Lampuzia, um, that's kind of what we're looking at and there'll be a new uh, comic book on that. All right. Benjamin, Dorcas, thank you both for coming in. Thank, thank you. you.